Hey Spirit Lifters, good day and I hope you're doing well. In this episode, I interview Kathleen. Kathleen is an optimal entrepreneur coach. In this episode, we talk about the challenges of being an entrepreneur in 2020. The challenges and difficulties all entrepreneurs face this year and, and any year really. And how her coaching process and method can really, really bring out the best in entrepreneurs. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and please remember to share with your family and friends. I hope you're all well, Spirit Lifters. Have an excellent day. Kathleen, welcome to Spirit Lift. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you, Kathleen, today, and I'm, I'm so excited. And Spirit Lifters, just so you know really quick, my amazing wife was able to cut my hair and I feel so much better. So I just want to get that out there. <laughs> I was, I'm really grateful that, you know, that she did what she did and not suffering with, you know, tremendous, you know, carpet of hair on my head. So feeling much better. So just a very quick note about that. Um, Kathleen, it's a pleasure to speak to you today. We're filming 2020. Um, so many countries globally are suffering um, societal-wise with economic issues in the likes that we've never seen. I mean, the 08, you know, downfall and recession time was, you know, that persisted for quite a while was very, very hard for many countries and, and many business people. The tech bubble also was in the early 2000s was was hugely um adversely negative to many businesses and entrepreneurs as well um i mean the great depression of course but now we're facing in 2020 a situation i think that's just not unlike anything compared to those i mean each one of those was absolutely daunting but i think we are seeing the situation of unemployment businesses being closed at a rate unlike any other in most countries and a lot of those may never come back and it is incredibly sad to see that i mean it's just to know people around you that are facing that and know that we may never see those businesses again or entrepreneurs again i don't know i hope they do but we just don't know and we don't know when how long this situation in in many countries will persist and it's very very heavy and very very frightening for many people you know anxiety and stresses and depression is way up this year in 2020 and a lot of it has to do with the economics of everything and uh it's just very heavy so for me and for our viewers i think this is an extremely important topic that we're talking about today with you and i think you're the right person to be speaking about <sighs> just a call to people who have businesses who are entrepreneurs and you know what they can do to navigate these times so my first you know point of question to you kathleen is this because i want people to know a little bit more about you in detail okay please explain to spear lifters what, it, what you mean, and as a stay on your website, what is a soul-centered entrepreneur and what it means to be a registered holistic nutritional consultant and why your approach specifically is different and or better than other types of, you know, people in your industry. We can please start with that. Okay. So for me, a soul-centered entrepreneur is somebody who works from a place of service, a place of of giving and and passion and i feel that if you work from a soul-centered place and you're following your soul's calling that any money or revenue you need will find you will follow you if you're working from the right place if you're working from a place that's totally money driven oftentimes you might attract people for a short time but you won't attract people long term or for really productive meaningful change and as a soul-centered entrepreneur, meaningful change is really what drives me, and that's what I want to see in people. As a registered holistic nutritional consultant, my goal is to teach entrepreneurs in particular, or even people who are solopreneurs in business all by themselves, 
or people who are in a business and sort of working their way towards their own thing, that the key to that truly is self-care. And you have to look after yourself. And as a holistic nutritional consultant, I look at nutrition as one of the main pieces. But one of the first things I teach is a bit of time management. Because the first thing I hear from entrepreneurs is I don't have the time and I don't have the money. But I mean, you and I've discussed this a little bit previously, but one of the things you have to do is to make the time for good self-care. And one of those things is even to take three to five minutes for a quick gratitude practice or a meditation or something at the beginning of your day. And that's how the holistic side is very different because I'm not just looking at your business. I'm not just looking at your health. I'm looking at how those two things interconnect and what your health looks like. So it is connected. It is creativity. It is nutrition. It is time management. It is, it is connection to others and connection to your creative side. I think my approach is different because, um, of my life experience that got me here. I'm of the gray haired era of generation of people and I've had a lot of life experience. So I've been to the point pushed to the limits of burnout to the point where I had medical crisis of my own that were very life threatening. And I had to sort of learn the hard way that self care really is, it is your business. And with, if you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, without your health, you have no business. Yeah, I think, yeah, and I think that's an extremely interesting and very pertinent way and message really to get to people who, you know, I guess not only just have a business, but just for anyone life in general, <laughs> I mean, that, that sense of balance. So, so going into your approach more and, and to elaborate more on what you're saying is if I'm, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is do you, re, you refer to this at, for your own method as the entrepreneurial optimization process, is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay, so can we, can we go into that in a bit more detail and how do you, Kathleen, um, what's your method into, let's say, diagnosing um, people and helping people on an individual basis? So. If I'm an entrepreneur, I, I get a hold of you. Hey, Kathleen, I'm stuck. I'm on balance. I don't know where I'm going with this. What walk us through your procedure and your process to help people. Okay. So usually the first thing I like to do is really have a good, honest, heart to heart conversation with somebody. And I want to know where they're at. Like you have to be honest with me and tell me where you're at, what you're thinking, where you're coming from. I was an employment counselor for, Many years in the past, I dealt with people at a social economic disadvantage with mental health issues. And lots of times people tend to want to sugarcoat things and sell you a certain set of ideals instead of tell you, so this is what's really wrong. And I found oftentimes it takes the one-on-one -on -one conversation to really get people to say, okay, this is exactly what I need. And that's what I expect from people. I want people to tell me where they're feeling stressed, where they're feeling overwhelmed, because my goal is to take you from overwhelmed to optimal, because I want you to be able to fo focus on the things that are super important to you to get the best you can out of what you're doing. So first of all would be a consultation with you to really have you examine what are you doing for self-care i actually have a checklist that i can actually send to you so if you want to post it sure and we can share with the spirit lifters that'd be great mm -hmm. yes and i think that you know looking at those things and the other thing people need to know is you do have time for self-care everybody has time for self-care it comes down the first thing i generally teach people after our one-on-one -on -one session is what are your priorities and what does that look like and how do you prioritize your day it's that little piece of time management to make time for all of the things in your day that help your business run but you can't pour from an empty cup and i know that's an old cliche but it's so true you need to refill your cup so where's your cup empty and what can we do to support you in filling that up mm -hmm. okay and does that include does your process include Consultation advice on nutrition, um, exercise practices, uh, creative thinking, like what, what themes does it mainly cover? So uh, we go through time management for sure. We go through um, self-care and the means of taking a break, exercise, meditation, and creativity, 
and connecting to a cohort of people because lots of times people are suffering because they feel like they're alone in this. So sometimes having other like-minded people, oftentimes I've worked in small groups so that people don't feel alone because people will learn better from each other and they will grow from other people's interaction and experience if they don't feel like they're alone in their process. So nutritional counseling is it's very much a broad spectrum thing because lots of people don't know that, you know, if you're getting by on, on coffee for breakfast or coffee and a pastry, then you're not starting your brain off with the right fuel. You're not starting your sense. Oh, uh, are you serious? Oh man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I gotta right. start all over. <laughs> I have a caveat for that. Um, if you want to do a good organic coffee that's yeah. low in mold and toxins and you want to put in collagen and some butter ghee or some good coconut oil and whip it up with a frother and have that absolutely then you okay. can do that yeah okay but, fine that's fine I'll, I'll, I'll tweak it a little bit then as you're saying okay not a not a you know drive through coffee that's full of cream and and sugar and in canada it's very much the canadian double double tims thing that people start with you know <laughs> i try and discourage people from that but that can change your day like there's so many small free easy things people can do to change their day yeah well, and and i want to get i think that's important what you're saying because also you mentioned about the group support uh, look I know certain entrepreneurs and well, I guess anyone in a situation where they know they may have like the map to change their life, but putting in practice is much more difficult. It's, it's you know, easier said than done kind of thing. So th there has to be a certain uh, discipline and accountability. And uh, you know, for some, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs I do know work more than anyone I know, you know, but they, the, the balances in life are definitely not there. You know, it's staying up all night, you know, not eating correctly like this. And, and there are certain stresses and tensions that they have more than anyone else I know. So it's it's about getting the right balances, as you say. So I, I think accountability is imperative here because I don't think a lot of them would be willing to do this on their own either. So. So what, what is your message to that as it relates to what you said to possibly having like groups, like group, you know, reinforcing to keep each other motivated? That's why when I tend to do group sessions, oftentimes how I'll start my group sessions is I'll take a group of potentially six is kind of my key number. I don't want to get too overwhelmed. I will go to 10, um, but I want to be able to have time to have a good, 30 minute conversation with people at the beginning and I want to have a good 30 minute conversation at the end along with like the zoom live chats in between for question and answer so there's connection and trust building and if you trust someone you're way more likely to be accountable to them and if we set goals at the beginning and they're not huge and everybody can do them and they're not costly and so that by the end everybody can reach those goals and if they want to continue on they certainly can continue on because I'm all about accountability. I, I know, I mean, I live in the country, I manage a small hobby firm, I have a husband who goes away a lot for work, so I'm easily railroaded, so I too need to be kept on task sometimes, and oftentimes we teach what we, what we need to know the most, so by keeping other people on task, I keep myself on task, and, and that's gotten to be a habit for me a lifestyle for me to do that so i've gotten a whole lot better at it but it's like every other habit it takes practice right yeah and discipline you know it's just yeah. like uh it's just you gotta just really set it into motion and you gotta be just consistent with it you know and because it does take time it's not immediate i think um you know you when you're to, trying to change sorry go ahead you have to be able to see the benefits you have yeah. to be able to do the change and stick with it but if you're doing something over and over and never seeing the benefits, that's why there's so many easy steps that you can do that you will notice the benefits of. And when you get the easy stuff down, then the harder stuff, when you realize, well, it worked for the easier stuff, and it'll work for the more complicated stuff because it will always work. Like being committed, it's not always a straight line. Like it's that old. Sure. Yeah, where you'll get there. You just have to find the way. Yeah, no, absolutely. And kind of within the same notion of what we're we're kind of uh threading with right now kathleen what what are the biggest in general 
the biggest challenges and difficulties that your clients come to you with as entrepreneurs? Well, you already hit one right on the head. Um, one of the biggest things they have is time management, working right. till all hours and sleep deprivation. Right. right. Who, who do you know who's an entrepreneur who, who's like, yeah, I'm super well rested and I have tons of spare time. In the, in the first few years, it's virtually nobody that I've met. Yeah. I only have one that comes to mind uh, and I think she knows who she is, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, often, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oftentimes not in their first year of business, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, that seems, or the first year of any new adventure for the most part. But I think one is, is everybody is exhausted. People feel like they don't have time and people feel like they don't have the financial resources. And the thing I really want to get across to people is you do have the time. Everybody has the same amount of time and every day it's what you do with it, how you allocate it and putting value on yourself, scheduling yourself in, scheduling in self-care into that is huge. That mm -hmm. makes an amazing difference to people. And when it comes down to the financial side, pretty much everything that I teach, you don't need any money to do. Like there's a few three minute, five minute meditations. There is a daily planning, like a one page mind map to plan your day, to get you into time management. There's a strategy that I teach people every 55 minutes. I want you to get up and step away from all of this electronics and everything. And I know that's not possible for everyone, but you have to tweak it and work it for you. But you need to get your circulation going because your your blood slows your it stagnates a little stagnates a little when you're sitting all the time. So to get you up, get moving, you know, eat nutritious snacks in between. Your brain actually functions better yeah. when you eat small nutritious snacks on a regular basis because it has to sort of pick up and go. Okay, you know, all your neurons are well, not all of them. A huge amount of your neurons are formed in your stomach and connected to your brain. So. I don't think a lot of people know that. I think that's extremely interesting, though, you, you mentioning that. Yeah, you, you, there's so many things that have to do with your digestion and your health. And I mean, again, you can eat as nutritious, as nutritious food as you can. But if you don't have good digestion, it's kind of in one side and out the other, you know? So. Right, right. No, yeah. And look, with what we're going through right now in 2020, I'm in talking to other, um, let's say economists that I know, I, I mean, some people know I have an economics background, but other economists that I've been in touch with, um, I, you know, there's this, uh, kind of idea throwing around about the, the idea of UBI. Okay. in, in many countries, you know, universal basic income, I'm, I, there and I don't want to put a, a blanket over things and say okay that, that could be a good solution especially with these kind of situations we're in regarding the pandemic I think my the, I think the point is there should be some personally some version of that in some countries uh, and however that's done and instituted properly because because of the following reason and this re is going to revert back to what we're talking about with entrepreneurs is that I think with um, many people can't pay their bills, can't buy food, can't pay rent right now. And th I mean, there is an enormous amount of stress regarding that in many countries, okay? The, an idea or a version or an adaptation of, a, of a, a way of UBI, not just UBI itself, but like something related to UBI. I think the problem that we had pre-COVID and now this situation that we're living in now was always um, a scarcity of money, you know? Like people were always living paycheck, or in many countries in many situations, paycheck to paycheck, you know, just barely getting by paying things, still ha being overridden with, with debt and bills and just an endless vicious cycle of, of going nowhere as it relates to money, you know? And there's several countries that have examples of, of that, you know, and this is a very difficult situation to live in. So, that's kind of just a small precursor in what I want to say now with what you're saying is like I think for entrepreneurs and the ones I know it's like sometimes the idea of not being able to get ahead and having that time uh, sensitive issue all the time 
has to do a lot with scarcity of money. It's like, I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of businesses fail within the first few years just because of money related issues, because entrepreneurs have to be working in a job most of the time and also getting their business going. You have no time when you're doing both those things. I think, so for me personally, a version of UBI, whatever it is, I'm not just saying UBI, but a, a version of that, okay, would help get scarcity of money off the minds of people more often, more quickly. And I think alleviate a lot of pressures, especially financially, that entrepreneurs would have. What do you think about that? I think that scarcity is a big problem on a whole bunch of levels, like the the scarcity of, of money, the scarcity of food, the scarcity of, of medical. I mean, I know here in Canada, when this first started, the first thing that happened was you couldn't refill a prescription for longer than 30 days because they didn't want anybody hoarding medications and you were limited on the food you could purchase in the store so nobody would hoard food. And there was all kinds of, and to me that did not, it, it did the reverse of what I think they intended it to by saying that there'll be enough for everyone. They were saying, we don't have enough so we got to limit what everybody gets. Right, right. Sometimes I think it's how the message is delivered that's as much the problem. And when it comes to scarcity, I think that COVID-19 has been a terrible pandemic, no question. Yeah. But I think as, as a society or as a race, as a human race, we need to really look at what this has taught us, universally speaking, and right. that is sustainability of things. And, and I mean, I have the privilege of living in the country and I do have a garden and I do have a sustainable food source because I have, you know, laying hens and things like that. But I think a lot of that on a lot of levels, if you can find a little way to do that, like I encourage people in one of my courses to do microgreens, you do the seeds and you put them in a, in a simple glass jar with cheesecloth and you can have microgreens all day, every day. And, and the cost of that to you a month would probably be about $8 a month to have microgreens all month. Like there is ways you can do it, but there are ways we've not had to explore before. We just haven't had to look at them because a lot of things have been available to us, you know? Yeah. There's, the scarcity is, is, it's real. Don't get me yeah. wrong, it's real, no yeah. question. But how much we let that overcome us, it's no different than fear. Like yep. fear is real, but how much of yourself you're willing to give over to fear has a great deal of impact on the outcome of that. So I think, you know, I would love to see a universal income level for people, but the, the politics of that ever coming together sure. No, it's difficult. Yeah. Not to dive into to politics or economics, but right. in theory, like I took economics 30 years ago, the theory of communism is a very good theory, but it went, it went very south very quickly, you know? Yeah, no, and I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily kind of uh, putting that particular idea of a structure on the table as it would be communism or socialism or something. But it not, I'm not a proponent for that, you know, that particular thing. But what I'm trying to say is like, um, like for example, I, I was in Helsinki. Oh, I think it was last year. I don't know. I'm losing sense of time now <laughs> in this whole situation of quarantine. I was in Helsinki, um, I think last year. Um, and I was there for uh, for work and for a conference. And it was interesting just to talk to people there and understand like sort of uh, sound structural things that they have in society, where then people there can kind of get on with their life and do other things that, that you know, really drive them without having sort of, sort of scarcity issues on their mind, you know? And look, I, I don't know how to label these things properly and I don't want to assume I know and I'm not an expert, but um, but but in general, you know, what what makes sense to me and I think what we're learning right now in this year of 2020 is that whether we go through a situation like we are now or we go through a whole different situation in the future, if there's certain structural things in order that just hit us like a ton of bricks and those things are 
are well done and well, you know, um, what's the proper word I'm looking for? I don't know. Like that, I, I, I have this analogous way of thinking like a house, you know, if, if you have a great floor, if you have great drywall, if you have great roof, if you have great, you know, like skeletal structure of your house, you just worry about the interior design, you know? So what I'm saying, I mean, and I'm not trying to be political or sort of, you know, get in that whole realm. But what I'm trying to say is like, my main point is this, is that, you know, if certain things happen and they're of the worst of the worst situations, like we're living right now in 2020, I mean, people, man, I don't know. I mean, people are getting laid off. People are suffering economically and socially and there, there's got to be sound structural things I would think that would still allow people to pay bills and pay uh, for the rent and food, you know, and that I, I don't see that as a political fancy. I see that as a human thing, you know, so okay. that's where I'm coming from, you know, and, um, you know, I, I just wanted, and that's what I'm really focused on with spirit lives. It's like, how can we find these different avenues and, and just really tend to the human needs and human you know uh s- stresses of everyday life and you know anxiety and depression no I'm, i don't i, I want to come from that angle always you know and 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 i know that's what you do with how you help people kathleen i think it's absolutely fascinating and kathleen can you can i would be really interested to know can you please through your process which in spirit lifters in the description below i'm going to include all of Kathleen's information and about the course that you can sign up for. I think you have a free course on your site. Is that right, Kathleen? I do. Yes. Yeah. So can you talk about overwhelmed? Oh, sorry. There was a delay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, That's the difference in our time space country. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. What were you going to say? It's the free course is called overwhelmed the optical. And really it's, it's where everybody can start. And it's just some really good, tips on how to just get your feet wet and figure out a few of the things like how important hydration is to your mind and your mental health and to the functioning of those things like there's so many little things and i think you know if we i I love your analogy of the house thing like that's amazing to me i think that if we can all take care of what's inside of our house and do simple things and i know i don't want to dwell on it but things like if you have a few minutes to meditate, if you can do a gratitude journal, if you have the clean water to stay hydrated, if you have clean water to stay hydrated, you can buy a small pack of seeds and grow microgreens from that. And you need a tablespoon for a large jar and it will grow over a five to seven day and you rotate them. And then you at least you have, you know, greens on your table. You can do small deck gardens. You can do a garden in your living room in pots for a little bit more sustainability to food. But not only does that provide that for you, but it gives you that sense of control where you don't lack something because you're actually growing and nurturing and and bringing something else to life. And you are within the confines of your space and ability having control over things because that's a lot of things for depression, anxiety, and stress comes from things that are out of our control. COVID-19 is out of our control, right? right? So we have to embrace the things we can control, make them tangible and really focus on them. And if, and if you are feeling down or feeling unhappy, then you need to find somebody and express it out loud. Because if you carry a burden, then it oftentimes becomes heavier, but it's the old adage. If you share it, it becomes lighter. And if yeah. you find out somebody else has had the same burden and they can potentially give you some tips and strategies to help you get through it, then then we're better as a, as humanity for doing yeah. that all from each other. That's huge. Absolutely. And I love that. I love that holistic way that you uh, come from and teach people. And, and I, I think it's, I think it's absolutely fundamental and imperative, you know, just to be, to feel balanced all around. And I think it's such a great way that you tackle that. And, and, and again, screw lifters, look, we're, I know I've gotten to know Kathleen a bit and coming from my own, um, purview of everything we're not trying to be political in any way we just we're we're very much about the the person the well-being of everyone and you know everything that we express in this way is just like how can we find 
you know, the right balances in her life. So just so you know, that's really just, it's coming from, you know, the best place and the best heart, you know, from our perspectives. And, and uh, I'm not even remotely political or no. wise in the, news in the economy, but I just know that we can't control most of those things, yeah, but we can't sure. control inside us in our own home. So that's where we have to look at and that's where we have to start and, and not exactly on those things. Absolutely, hundred percent agree. I'm, we're we're hundred percent on that same page, <laughs> Kathleen. So, I have a question about your program because I have the chance to look as well, and I think it's absolutely fascinating. What can you and Spirit Liver just hope you can check it out? You know, like in the description below, uh, as we've been saying, Kathleen, can you please? Do you have a particular example of sort of case study or successful? Uh, entrepreneur that went through your program and how their situation was maybe before and after that just give our spirit lifters an insight yeah um it's i think it's such an interesting time because it was a success story before covid and a sex success story now even right. that looks very different right yeah and i think the big thing now is there's been a few people that i've worked with and one of the things they've had to to look at differently is the time that we've had in, we'll call it isolation, social distancing. I'm not sure how it's termed in all the different countries and things, but mm -hmm. making people really slow down and regroup and reevaluate it. I have lots of people come to me and say, I don't think this is all what I should be doing or what I, what I want to do, or this is what I really liked, but I'm in the wrong direction. And I think that's been, I think that's been one of the gifts of COVID. And I know people are like a gift from COVID. I don't think so, but they're really right. Heavy, right? Yeah. I, 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 if, you know, people understand what you're insinuating, that's what's important. So no, I, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I had one particular lady and she's a mobile esthetician and she is committed to helping people all over the place. And she does uh, a lot of senior care. She does a lot of senior foot care, health care helps them look after certain needs. They have especially diabetic people with their hands and feet. And she herself is a diabetic person. And this has taught her to really slow down, regroup. And how much money does she really need to live on? And what really are her priorities? And how is she going to regroup them on? And having these here in Nova Scotia, Canada, we had a three month of pretty much total isolation where you they shut down all businesses like unless it was an essential services it was shut down so lots of people spent the first couple of weeks in almost panic mode because they didn't know what was going to happen next and and it's like all the stages of grieving that people will go through when they suffer something like this and it, and they get to a place of of acceptance in the end through a lot of work it's not it doesn't just sort of happen it can happen organically but for some people you need a little bit of uh, a sounding board to talk it through with and she really realized that her priority was letting go of some of the people that did not serve her in her life or there wasn't a reciprocal exchange of energy even not even about the money she always says she'd do people for free as long as they were grateful and that's that says to me that she really loves her job but she learned to manage her time better she learned a better self-care. She definitely learned some better eating strategies because when she slowed down, she started, and she was home, she had time to eat better and pay attention to what was going in her body and how she was feeling. And she too is type one diabetic. She lost weight, she got things under control. So the success of being able to stop and focus on the whole picture, the nutrition side of it, the connection and sometimes disconnection side of it's very important. You know your creative side she had more time to do some other things and i want to say this about the creative side people tell me all the time i'm not creative that doesn't apply to me right everybody everybody's creative everybody yeah, for sure yeah. and we yeah, we yeah yeah programmers are creative yeah yeah and you need i think we're gonna need it more than ever especially as you know technology takes more of, more and more of our life you know in the years to come so like creativity and just tapping into that part of us that really wants to express um in any way that we naturally feel is really important you know and uh and and not and not feel so much that we're stuck in a rat race all the time you know i think that's why 
things and you know the way we want to be do not you know reveal themselves is just because we're always in this motion of never getting out of the situation we're actually stuck in you know so creativity is fundamental you know and uh and that that's a really interesting example that you gave and i thank you so much for sharing that kathleen you know and I think mm -hmm. right on a side note, like for people who say i'm not creative and i don't i don't have a creative bone in my body i actually do an art class that i've done with people in hospice care and the life people i've had the privilege of working with so many great people and it's just a form of abstract art where you do a short meditation and you put paint down on a page. There's a little bit of a process. Any kids can do it. Like anybody can do it. And some of the beautiful things that come out of it and people create, and it is a reprieve. It's a step away from the rat race that, yeah. that regenerates the mind and helps people just take a deep breath and see something different on a page and think, oh, that is that is kind of pretty i did create that that's awesome and i mean it, it doesn't sound like it has anything to do with being an entrepreneur but if you there's so many sides to us as humans you have to bring all of them into what you're doing if you want to be a soul-centered entrepreneur who does everything yeah. they do with passion 100 percent. yeah that's really incredible kathleen and just to finish kathleen what would be your message for all entrepreneurs <laughs> anywhere I'm in this world <laughs> um, for getting through this time now in 2020 what would what would be just like you're you're just whispering there hey you know think about this or or try this or like what would just be like your one t sort of tip in general for them right now I just want to tell every entrepreneur out there the biggest thing I have to tell you is do not give up. Even if it's, even if you're pressing pause, don't give up because you are unique. You are the only you there is. And even if there's 10 people doing what you're doing, nobody's had your life experience and nobody's had your perspective. So continue to do it, but to be able to continue to do it effectively and from the right place, you have to value yourself and know that you deserve good self care. You need to look after you because you are your business. You do have time and you are important. So make time for those things, especially in challenging times like this. We, we have to count on us and we have to reach out to other people and say, hey, don't be afraid to say, I need a hand. There's, there's nothing wrong with that because usually we want to help other people as well. So we're more than willing to help. It's, it's, it's the circle, everybody's, in the circle, holding hands, giving to each other. You just have to be willing to step into the circle. Excellent, excellent, great, and a great, you know, insight to to finish on Kathleen and and Spearlifters. I encourage you all to please check out Kathleen's website. Sign up for a course. I'm sure it's gonna, especially entrepreneurs, really gonna change the direction of where you can go right now and in the future with with your business and your endeavors. So Kathleen, thank you so much again for being on Spearlift. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love, I love, love what you're doing. I think it's so important. I think it's so valuable and the community is so lucky to have you, the community of Spirit Lifters. It's, and I'm privileged to be a part of it even for a short time. I'm, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathleen. And thank you, Spirit Lifters. And we wish you a great day. Mm -hmm.